In this tutorial, I will show you some interesting things that you can do with queries displayed by standard AWRIM grids. For example, I'll show you how to display rows and columns in different colors and styles, how to group data, how to display filters, how to expand rows, and a few other things. Please make sure that you watch the queries tutorial that explains what an AWRIM query is and how it presents the data before watching this tutorial. Let me start by showing you how you can display different rows in different colors based on the value of some attribute. We'll be working with the same application that we have been using in the queries tutorial. In this application, we have the customer object and we have the query that shows the customers. I have modified the query slightly so that it shows all customers unconditionally. Let's say that we want to display male and female customers in different colors. Male customers with a blue background and female customers with a green background. Not that you want to do it in a real application, but it's easy to do this for the illustration purposes. To display different records in different styles, we need to define what in AWRIM is called item rules. These are rules that define conditions for displaying records in a particular style. So I select the item display rules property of the query. Our first condition will check if the gender is male. And for this condition, we'll define the following style. We'll display it with a blue background. And for the female customers, We'll define the following style, green back background. Let's see the results. We'll log into our application using the browser and run our query. As you can see, depending on the gender of the customer, the record is displayed with a different background color. When specifying styles, you can set not only the background color, but also the foreground color and different font styles as well. Now I will show you how to display individual values returned by a query in different colors and styles. In our application, each customer stores total communication duration in minutes. Let's display duration that is longer than 100 minutes in red and also make it bold and italic. Note that in this case, we only want to display one column differently, not the entire record, like in the item rules example. To do this, we need to define styles of the attribute in question, and then let the query use the styles of the attribute. How to define attribute styles is explained in the Advanced Forms tutorial. If we select the Total Communication Duration attribute and go to its Styles property, we will see that I have added a style with the condition that Customer Total Communication Duration is greater than 100 and in this case, an attribute is displayed with a red foreground color with bold italic font style. Now we need to tell our query to use this attribute style. I 
I have added the total communication duration attribute to the list of columns displayed by the query. So we select this column and click on the Other Settings link to display more properties of the column. And then we tick the Use Styles defined in the attribute when displaying this column checkbox. I have also removed item rules from the query so that we can see the results better. Let's see how this looks. When we log into the application again and run our query, we can see that duration longer than 100 minutes is displayed in red, bold and italic. One of the powerful features of query presentation is the ability to expand rows. Row expansion is useful when you want to display details about a particular record. For example, you could display a form of the object that the record represents. The form can show not only attributes contained in the record, but all other attributes as well. Or, if a record represents a parent, the expanded record could show a list of children for this parent. Think of order and line items, for example. Or we could have some attribute with a really long textual value. Showing this value in the original record may not be practical, but showing it in the expansion can be very handy. In our application, let's show a form of the customer object when the user expands a customer record. To do this, we select the Expansion of Rows property. Here we can choose the option Show values of attributes represented by the template below. This option is useful when we want to show a long textual value, for example. But the second option allows us to perform any operation when a row is expanded. We can show a form, run a query, start a process. In our case, we will show a form. Let's see how this works. Now, if we run our query, we can see that every record has a little icon next to it. If we click on it, the row expands and we can see the form of the corresponding customer. This is a really powerful feature. Let me now say a few words about column width. The width of a column can be specified in the dialog invoked if we click on the Display As property. If we do not specify the width of the column explicitly, a variable will automatically split all available width equally between columns. If you specify the width of the column explicitly, a variable will respect this width and will allocate the remaining widths to columns with no width explicitly specified. So if you want the column to take as much space as possible, leave its width blank. Let's allocate 150 pixels to the date of birth and 100 pixels to the duration and photo columns. The remaining space will be occupied by the first name and last name columns. We can see in the preview window how this looks. Column width will only affect how a query is displayed initially, but then the user can resize the columns and change their widths. The user can also hide or show columns. But what if the user wants to save his layout so that the next time the query is displayed exactly as he, as he set it up before? 
To allow this, we need to add save and restore operations to our query. So we go to Panel Operations and add the save operation of the save state type. And we add the restore operation of the restore state type. Let's see what happens now. When we run our query, it is displayed according to the layout we have specified in the configuration tool. You can see that the date of birth, duration and fora have the widths we have specified and the remaining width is shared between the first name and the last name. Now I will make the date of birth column smaller and I will also make the photo col column invisible. We can see two buttons in the toolbar to save and restore settings. I now press the save button and the query layout is saved. Let's rerun the query and check. You can see that the query is redisplayed using the last layout. Note that this layout will be saved for this particular user only. To restore the settings, I click on the Restore button and when we rerun the query, the factory default is restored. Let me show you now how filters work. Imagine that our query displays quite a lot of records. Filters give users the ability to find a particular record quickly. To do this, we click on the Filters property of the query. First, we need to select which attributes the user will be able to filter by, and then select how filters will be presented. Let's filter by first and last name only, so we will unselect other attributes. Filters can either be displayed in the column header or in a special row. Let's start with the column header. I will also go to the Display As property and untick the Show Column Menu checkbox. I will explain why later. Let's see how this works. As I log in and run our query, I can now see two buttons next to the first name and last name columns. Because we have unticked Show Column menu, we can see these buttons immediately, otherwise they would be on the column menu. When I press the button, I can use a special dialog to filter my records and find the record I want. For example, I want customers that start with letter S. Let me show you now filters displayed in a separate row. So I go back to the filters dialog and this time I select the show filters as a separate row at the top of the grid option. If we go back to the browser, we can see the separate row with filters. I can now quickly specify the, the value to filter by and cancel the filter. You can also combine a row with a filter button. Now I'll show you how to group records in a query. Let's group our records by gender. To do this, I need to first sort our query by gender.
Then I need to add the gender attribute to the list of columns displayed by the query. Now I can define the grouping. I click on the grouping property, tick group grid by checkbox and select gender from the list of attributes. We will not worry about summaries at this stage. Let's see how this works. When we log in and run our query, we can see that all customer records are now grouped by gender. We see the female customers first, followed by the male customers. We can expand and collapse each group. Note that you can also display groups collapsed initially and even calculate summaries for each group. And finally, I want to show you how to group column headings of the query. For example, let's group first name and last name under the name heading. To do this, we will select the display as property, click on the first name column and select the other settings option. There we will indicate that the column should start a new group. The last name column should be included in the current group. And the duration column should not be included in any groups. We can see how this looks in the preview window. There's a few other things you can do with standard queries, such as allow the user to resize it, specify auto-refresh options, display summaries, and many more. For more details, please see the user guide.